So which is the most important for you, do you think? If there's one trap to avoid if you're doing video next year? I think, I think going forward next year, it is. You are listening to the Video First Podcast, presented by Digital 22. The show is hosted by Paul Mortimer, the head of growth, and produced by Jonathan Scrivens, the video specialist at Digital 22. Welcome to Video First, a Digital 22 podcast and YouTube series about all things related to video in business and taking a video first approach to everything you do so that it can transform your business. Paul and John here. And today's topic, John, biggest video mistakes you're making in your business. Why are we talking about that? Yeah, so, I mean, we're uh, coming towards the end of the year now. Um, So we've just looked back. We've had a few conversations. We're looking through sort of what we've noticed have been not necessarily, uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but mistakes that we've made and that clients have made when it comes to video. It's been a bit of a strange year for everyone, as we know, you know, we're coming out of lockdown um, and suddenly everyone's using video, as we know, you know, everyone's doing webinars. So suddenly there's this big excited energy for creating videos within your business. I think the traps that you can fall into easily. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, people have sort of just dived headfirst into certain ideas because they think, great, we need to get video out. But um, yeah, you say there's a few pitfalls and a few traps that people fell into. So we sort of we've looked through a few things and we've put together like our top five list of things you should avoid going into 2022 with your video approach in in your business. So you've got our first one for us, which is uh, smart goals, I believe. Yeah, exactly. I think and this boils down to expecting too much. So instead, set yourself a smart goal with your videos. I think the biggest trap I see people falling into time and time again is expecting too much from a video campaign or even a single video. Um, Unless you're spending thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, you're not going to go viral, barring an absolute more lucky than winning the lottery. And you're also not going to get millions and millions of viewers through your website thanks to one video. It's just not going to happen. Even one video on YouTube is not going to bring in tens of thousands of people. Video is a much more of a bite-sized piece than that. You wouldn't expect the same off one tweet or one blog, but there's still that higher expectation of video because of various reasons around the authority that video brings the subconscious power that it holds over us as an audience i think that can then stray business leaders marketing managers into thinking actually this is this big massive impressive thing therefore it's going to have big massive impressive results on its own as a single video but it won't to so mm. set those right targets yeah i think for a lot of people as well um you, as you mentioned there uh you know if you flick through instagram all you're going to see are viral videos hit after hit you know if you're looking on youtube you're going to be hit in the face with the most popular videos that was that week so people are always seeing the viral hits they're never seeing the tens of thousands of millions of other videos yeah. uploaded that day that didn't you know that weren't like a splash in the ocean but some of them have got 10 views and got two sales conversations out of them yeah so which would you rather have yeah, but that's it. Yeah, that's it. It's, um, it's understanding that it's not all about the views. It's not all about the viral hit. 100%. And then a timeline as well. Like To make a smart goal, it needs to be specific, it needs to be measurable, it needs to be actionable, realistic, and in a time frame. So uh, another good learning we've seen from companies first dipping their toe in is keep that time frame tight. It is just a video. It's We're not going to expect the world, and we shouldn't therefore spend an age on it. Yeah, and let's keep the project tight, keep it moving. Um, and that'd be my first point. Yeah, cool. So going forward into 2022, so how would you summarize that for people? What If they're planning a six, 12 month video strategy, um, how should they not be overly expectant of a video? I think it depends on your context, but have a look at what you're expecting from your other channels and bring make sure it's in line with those. Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. And second point then, you want to take that one? Let's go for it. Remind me what the second so, point is. <laughs> cramming too much into one video, point number two. Yeah, cramming. so yeah, yeah. I think that leads on quite nicely from that last point. Uh, so cramming too much into one video is, again, something a lot of people approach us. You know, if it's a brand new client, they'll come to us and they'll have the idea of they want to put their brand out there into the world. Maybe they've not done video at all before. So... Of course, they're excited to just 
create a video which is brilliant absolutely yeah don't get me wrong like i mean i, I love going all out with videos you know like i'd i'd rather add as many ex explosions and car chases yeah. into a video <laughs> as possible but it's not always the best use of your time your budget you know your if if it is the first video you're putting out into the world imagine cramming you know and about us and like about our product and like the history of our company all into one video and then as we said in the last point only two people watch it you've you've wasted all that like all those resources and now for the next video you might not necessarily have anything to talk about now or you end up doing a version two yeah which if you with a bit more planning and a bit more thought you could have been a bit more tactical with what you covered in the two videos absolutely yeah so i mean this is something that one of our uh, recently new clients so I won't name them yet uh, but they've got a 12 month video strategy with us and they've been very um, sort of the opposite uh, at this point yeah the absolute opposite yeah they've been really accepting of what we've been telling them like start small you know start with a, a quick two minute this this is us and then the next video is this is why we're doing it and then the next video is here's a little taster of the uh, the the what we're trying to sell to the mm. world and then here's a bit more of an in-depth video of that same point so they're going to start very very small just hitting singular points and then you know grow that over a 12 month period and the beauty of that is it just allows them to then put that two minute video on instagram getting a bit of engagement a bit of traction and then the next video you've already got a little bit of an audience but you haven't thrown every you know haven't thrown the kitchen sink at it i think I don't know why. I guess maybe the things we touched on earlier about this. It's, it used to be expensive. It used to be rare. So therefore, you want to get as much out of your video as possible. But in every mm. other part of your marketing and sales content, you don't try and cater for the whole buyer's journey in one piece, on one web page, on one blog, on one download. There's still a bit of a hangover that we see that people fall into of, well, this is a bit more expensive than a blog post. Mm. or an email shot therefore I'm going to ask it to do more across the buyer's journey but what you're saying there is you know plan several pieces of video to span that buyer's journey yeah I mean I think you hit a really really good point there that is that legacy of yeah 10 years ago you would have to go to a, you know you'd have to go to LA to a Hollywood agency <laughs> and be like right we've got 50,000 pound can you make us a 30 second TV advert Whereas, as you say, now the technology is so readily available that it's not, yeah, you don't have to throw all your ideas on one thing because you're not spending your entire year's budget on one 30-second on advert. Yeah, that £50,000 could now get you like five years of video every single week for the, you know. So, yeah, exactly. that's a really good point. And the third point then that you had was not making them evergreen or multipurpose, which I think, again goes to that strategy, doesn't it? That 12-month strategy. Yeah, yeah. So there seems to be a consistent theme so far is linking video into yeah, your marketing strategy more and more. Um, and again, that's probably probably a legacy thing where people used to just pay for video as a one-off thing. So it was never really part of a long-term strategy. It was just like, right, we've got a budget. We need to make a video to get our name out there. And then that's just going to be the same video we use you know, on the website for the next five years. But yeah, as you say, now you can... You have that luxury of being able to add video into your market strategy as much as um, writing blog posts or sending out emails or doing social media. So, uh, yeah, like making your videos evergreen is probably now more important. You know, how can you take that one video you filmed? Like, how do we take this exact podcast we're doing right now and rather than it just being a single SoundCloud uh, podcast episode, a single Vidyard, this is, multi, this is the multi-purpose part of your point then, sort of. Yeah, so we can... You redistribute it. Exactly, so before we started filming, we decided, right, let's split this podcast into five quick-fire tips, although, you know, the way that we rant on sometimes, <laughs> are not, not exactly quick-fire, but, um, yeah, we can now cut these five tips that we've put in this video and turn them into five singular videos that can then be used on potentially, like, Instagram or LinkedIn over the next five weeks, you know, for example. So that's that was our fourth thought filming this podcast and i think that's what a lot of clients need to consider when planning their videos like how do they exactly. do the similar thing and the evergreen bit is that this topic or these these pitfalls these traps have been there for the past few years so we just they're still there these are the ones that are still there this year like you said mm -hmm. there's more and more people you're exploring video it becomes more readily available 
the evergreen point is I think these challenges, these pitfalls and traps will still be there yeah. in 12 months' time for some people. Absolutely. That's what makes the content evergreen, that it could still be handy to some people in the future. So whatever your version of that is in your field, your industry, what are those challenges that are long-lasting that people will still need to be solving in 12 months' time and that will mean your video is still relevant to people yes. in 12 months' time. Mm -hmm. And I think to add like a little technical point to that as well is, again, 10 years ago, if you filmed a video, next year it might look out of place because the technology's old. It might look a bit like you know the whole revolution from SD video to HD and then HD to 4K. You know, watching older videos, you can tell the quality is poorer. But nowadays, you know, everything's more or less HD at the very, very minimum, you know, going into 4K, 8K at the moment is a big thing. So your evergreen video next year will still look as good and as polished and as sharp as it did this year. Like the technology is at a point where I think content will live a lot longer. Absolutely. That's a great point and a nice little extra on there as well. So point number four, expecting success from the get go or expecting to perfect your first video. Yeah, and we, we've probably slightly covered this in point number one, but I think it's, again, probably a legacy thing for a lot of people. It's like you're putting all this time and effort into video. Of course you want to get it right, but, I mean, look back at our, the very first episode of this podcast that we did. You know, we, we had an idea, we had a plan, and we just sort of we went for it. It was like, right, let's, let's get the video done. Let's make it. Let's see how we do on camera mm. and then at the end of it we'll evaluate it we'll learn from it and we'll build on it and now you know if you look at episode one compared to this episode it looks completely different style wise format wise things like that so yeah i can understand why clients want to get their videos perfect straight away because you know they're putting a lot of money into it and it's maybe for them it's quite an exciting new venture but i think again because video is more easily accessible it's more affordable to do long term i think what holds a lot of people back is and we've spoke about this on previous podcasts you know you want to get it right so maybe they spend 12 months thinking about the mm -hmm. video and then they, ne they don't put anything down so like no one's it's getting it's getting no views when you you two people are banding it back and forth trying to perfect it is it so absolutely zero yeah. views there from, from your potential audience yeah so and that building an audience point was something I think you wanted to mention in this, that's what I've got in the notes, that you need to build an audience rather than aim for perfection. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, get content out there, put it out in the world, see what works, see what people are engaged with. So there's no point spending 12 months planning a video, trying to get it right, and you put it out there and then everyone hates it. Everyone <laughs> says, oh, that looks rubbish, or it sounds terrible, like, or, you know, what are you guys talking about? You know, we're not interested in this. Whereas if you're putting out maybe sort of videos that are maybe 80% of what you had in mind, um, but at least they're out there in the world and then you're looking at engagement, you know, what are people clicking through? What are people putting in the comment section? If people are, you know, loving it, great, you carry on perfecting that idea. If people are just not engaging with it, then that's when you can think, right, well, actually this idea that I've had in my head for five years isn't working with people. We need to, we need to move it's, on and change our, our plan a bit. You're right, it does link into that first point about not expecting too much and having a smart goal for your video work because you need to find out whether that goal's been met and to do that the video needs to be out there and you need to be getting data back. Yep. You need to be getting audience responses back. So viewing figures, play rate, how many people hit play, how many people watch it, how many click the CTA, how many people reference it in your sales conversations, like more anecdotal evidence. All that data then can be used to make your videos better next time. All that counts on doing more than one video and it all counts mm -hmm. on getting the video out there. So it's yep. all tied together nicely. And then you mentioned something that takes us on to the last point, being afraid to be different. Yeah, so I think for me, this really hit home recently watching, so HubSpot through their yearly inbound, um, what would you call the it? Conference. conference, yeah. And I watched uh, one talk, um, I can't remember the name of it, I'll have to try and find the link somewhere for it. Um, but. It was a company out in America who were uh, sat within the corporate space and like a lot of corporate companies, you know, Microsoft, for example, they're very much straight laced, I suppose, um, mm -hmm. in terms of their 
their logo, their you know, the branding, how they put themselves across. And this company, I think it was actually Salesforce, if I remember rightly, instead of following what maybe they'd been told that they should follow because they're a serious mm -hmm. software company, they decided to use a little animated like Disney character as part of their branding. And they said when they first like pitched the idea, it was met with, you know, a lot of people saying, oh, well, people won't take it seriously. We can't use Disney characters. We're a serious business. But what that actually did was made them stick out from the competition because... We were all doing the same explainer videos, the same uh, yeah. talking heads. And exactly, yeah. So yeah. people were seeing, you know, going through a sea of, I don't know, software listings on Google. Cool, um, nice, very good looking animations and software. Yeah, Absolutely. But then, of course, the one that's going to stick out is the one that looks wildly different from the rest of them. Uh, you know, if that's for better or for worse, at least it's sticking out and you're like, Oh, who was that company that had that little furry character that bounced yeah, around? Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, it was Even if it's, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure about this campaign, but it's made you look at the tool, hasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. So I think that that was where that came from. I mean, I, I know if you've got anything to add to that, but it was... I think being, making sure you, even if you don't go down that route, like, you know, going, going way left field like that example, mm -hmm. even just showing more character and more of your natural side, yeah, instead of being too safe and corporate, I think is is a good move because mm -hmm. all corporate videos will blend into one mm -hmm. corporate style, and what we mean by that is the safe, scripted, like run of the mill corporate video we can all picture. Yeah, absolutely nothing wrong with it. No, and there's a time and place for that as well, the right setting. But even then, even with the same structure, the same length, the same script. Getting some character in there, I think, is a way to stand out. It, it, yeah. Personally, humour, um, daring, the more different you'll be, the more narrow you get down to an audience, the more effective it'll be. Mm -hmm. But I get it. I get why people play it safe. If, if you've got a legal department, if you've got multiple yeah. locations and you need to toe the line a bit, I get it 100%. Yeah, there's, but there's, you there's should, a time and a place You should go right it. up to that line, though, as much as you can. Yeah, yeah. We're not saying, you know, if you're, a, I don't know, like a hospice care provider yeah, yeah you're, you're not going to come just, on there and like make you don't make jokes comedy skit yeah exactly Absolutely, but. Yeah. but there's then nothing stopping you doing you know as you say um internally your video campaign could be a bit more for your own staff could be a bit like time in a place it's, it's thinking of the context and then again yeah. you're back onto that place where well that video where we've been a bit more human a bit more laid back yeah that can be away from when we're in legal discussions or the end of a sales process or mm -hmm. You know, it's a time and a place, and you're back to yeah. having multiple videos for different purposes, not asking one video to cater for the whole buyer's journey. Is there anything else, any, anything else to add for you? Oh, I think that's about it. I think we say we're trying to keep this one very quick fire. So which, I think okay, then, so which is the most important for you, do you think? If there's one trap to avoid if you're doing video next year? I think, I think going forward next year, it is being exper experimental. I think it's that the last point we just covered. It's not being afraid to try new things. And I think that kind of blends in with one of our previous points about you don't have to get your video perfect straight away so maybe put out a video that's wildly against what you think you should be doing but see if it gets engagement if people like that then you know that risk that you took to be different that means right we know that that you know people liked what we did there they like the fact we were a bit humorous they like the fact that we used a little cartoon character maybe they like the fact that we added different colors to our uh, logo or something like that so i think going forward into 2022 to stand out because I think video is just going to be even more next year it's just going to be constant from every single company out there they're all going to be wanting to make a video so what are you doing to make yourself stand out from the crowd I like that's, it that's it for me I think for me it's don't cram too much into one video I think I'm going to take mm. one of these things away I think that's 100% I get why you're saying that for me personally just my opinion I think the cramming too much into one video is the one that stands out for me but all of them sort of make sense and they all tie together as well so yeah absolutely cheers John um, check out our other podcasts they're all on Spotify SoundCloud wherever you get your podcasts just search for Digital 22 yep. and check out all of our videos on our video hub at video.digital22.com and please subscribe to our YouTube channel Digital 22 Online Limited see you next time see you guys Thank <laughs> you.